I know her on site in just a little bit. I happened to speak to uh, your town a couple of weeks ago, and Jody is, is from Coosa County, as I say. And I'm not going to pick on her or Coosa County, but Coosa County is a small rural county uh, right, close to, right close to where we're sitting. They don't have a chamber of commerce. Yes, we do. Oh, well, they have a new chamber of commerce. I'm sorry. I don't want them to They do have a chamber of commerce. Excuse me. They're all volunteers. They're all volunteers. They've just started. A it's new, though. Is it it's relatively new chamber of commerce. I guess I need to go to Rockford and spend some money before. <laughs> but Jody exemplifies, and I know there are folks in this room that are just like her. I just happen to know her story a little bit. She exemplifies someone who was in rural Alabama who chose to live there and who wants to make a difference there, not change your community, but take what they have, the assets that they have, and do something with them and make a little money at the same time. And that's really, that's locally, and she's not elected. She's a citizen, not elected. So oftentimes we think about, and, and I was listening to the presentation uh, earlier, we think about, uh, as they say, the usual suspects of being the local folks, uh, the leadership, the, the elected leaders. And in a lot of our uh, places across the state, we've got great local elected leadership. Sometimes we need local elected leadership that needs to be pushed a little bit. I'm not going to name those people. Y'all can name those people in your hometowns. But each of you, I use Jody, each of you can, can play a role and will play a role in pushing your area to make it a little bit better, a little bit better than, than where it is today. So I was mayor of the city of Prattville little town uh, south of here, um, and there's some practical folks in the room, a city of about 35,000, we had about 400 employees, a budget of about $40 million. I became mayor when I was 31. I looked like I was 12, I was 31. I went to school, there's people in this room, one lady in this room that I went all the way through school with, and I'm older than she is, but um, we've known each other for a long, long time, so I served as mayor served three terms as mayor, and then I went to work at ADECA. is an agency, the Department of Economic Community Affairs, um, gives federal dollars uh, out, awards federal dollars, and awards out all across our state. So we were able to work in all 67 of our counties and all 464 of our cities. Our budget over there at ADECA, is, uh, their budget is about $300 million annually, but we're responsible for about $750 million, $800 million each year. So uh, I was able to lead really good teams and I'm a believer in team leadership. It, it's not one guy doing it all. It's, it's a team, it's a team, team, team effort. So when I became mayor, there were some smart folks. There were mentors, and, and I don't, you know, that term mentor gets thrown around, but there were mentors who um, said and who thought, we got this young kid, and he's the mayor, and and look, I became mayor overnight. Our mayor died in office. Some of you will remember that. Our, we had a, uh, our mayor was David Whetstone. He was on a on a, uh, a trip overseas. He was actually in Germany. I was president of the city council. I had been on the city council seven years, so I was elected when I was like 24. But I had been there seven years. Our mayor died. I became the mayor. So these people, it wasn't like an election. People really did say, oh my gosh, we, we got this young kid. We need to do something to help him. And so we had mentors who put their arms around me and who said, you, you know what you should do? I, I happened to be, it was, it was 1999, and I happened to be in our leadership Otaka class, and I really didn't know anything about leadership Alabama. But these guys said, you know, when you finish leadership Otaka, we're going to put you, we're going to make sure you get in leadership Alabama. And then on and on and on. And so I'm going to try to advance this and we'll see what happens. So John Quincy Adams, you know, that's a great quote. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you're a leader. Jody McDade's a leader in Coosa County. Not elected to anything, but she lit. And they know her. I promise you this. I was at the courthouse one time, and she walked in, and they all know her. Good, bad, or indifferent. They didn't know her. So we're all leaders at our church, at our home, at our school, whatever our circle of influence, we're all leaders. You don't have to be elected. So then, you know, what is leadership? And I don't know if Chris is still here, but David Matthews, uh, that's a great, you know, leadership's provided by anyone who carries out any of the tasks in the work of change. This kind of leadership passes different people at different times. There are many leaders. And change I enjoy about Alabama because I'm from here. I live here. My children are in public school. Our children are in public school here. But we can improve. I mean, we can improve. We can always improve. 
And, and I, I know people get excited sometimes because they like things the way they are. When I was mayor, all my mother wanted was a Parisian. <laughs> Jim, and, and you know, the people under 30 don't know what a Parisian is, but those of us that are, that are a little bit older, we know what a Parisian is. That's all my mother wanted. I want a Parisian. You will be successful if you put a Parisian in Prattville. You will be successful. But I want Prattville to stay at home. Okay, well, they don't put Parisians on dirt roads. So we got to either expand or not. That's, that's you know, we're always changing. So there's many groups uh, working that, that to improve our state. And I'm going to go over just a few that I happen to have. Some of this might be uh, slightly <coughs> repetitive, but I have either uh, served on the boards, still serve on the board of these organizations, and work closely with these organizations. So you heard Mary and Main Street, and that's a map of our state, and, and it shows our Main Street communities. She did not talk about the four points, um, you know, organization, promotion, design, and economic fatality. Their tagline, the Main Street tagline, I'm on the board, is creating jobs and, and keeping character. Main Street is a tremendous asset. If you're not involved, if your community's not involved in Main Street, go on this website, check it out, see if you can become involved at any level. Some communities are never going to have a Main Street director, but they could be an associate community. I don't know if that's what it's called. Mary Main Street. Yeah. Network community. Um, but... Get to know Mary. It, it, again, it's cross leading it's leader, it's, it's discussing and getting to know the right people, having those right people. Main Street, great organization. Design Alabama. I, I, I serve on the board of Design Alabama. They do several different things. One of the things they do is the Mayor's Design Institute, where they take five mayors once a year, they put them in a room together in Prattville for about two days, and it's only the mayors and design professionals, and they talk about design in their community, challenges in their community issues in their community that relate to quality of life. This year, uh, the Mayor's Institute is in February, and we've got, um, it's, a, it's, it's called River Mayors. It's really for River City. So we've got Gadsden, we've got Florence, we've got uh, Decatur, we've got Selma, and we've got York. All of those people are, are new mayors with the exception of Gina Robbins over there in York. And I'm not sure York, uh, is Allison still? Is, is York a river town? They said it was river town the other day. I, I don't know if it's really a river town, I mean, but hey. Okay, Sumter County is a river county, we'll say. So anyway, Design Alabama, that's a great organization that does good work to lift people across our state. Your town, you heard Chris talk about your town. I put this slide on there because I really like that, that quote. No longer will I hold back. This may have been Jody, I don't know. No longer will I hold back. The Your Town Alabama program exceeded my expectations, going home to recruit more decision makers and leaders to attend next year. This workshop is very much worth the investment of money and time. If you are sitting there and you think, I've never, you know, I will never have anything to do with design in my town, in my community, I would encourage you to, when you get home, when you are available, look up your town, find the next day and then apply and go. It is very well worth just the networking. It's worth seeing things from a different opinion. You know, I was in Gadsden this week, and I was talking about how, I was talking to the mayor, and I was talking about how beautiful the, the down, their, their river walk is. And they don't realize it sometimes because they live there and they see it every day. We all, we all, we're all guilty of living somewhere and seeing things every day and we don't realize. Drew and I live in Prattville, Jim Searcy grew up in Prattville. Amy works in Prattville. There's an intersection in Prattville where all of my life, all of my life, it's a five-point intersection, there are three, two or three yachts sitting on, and they're not really yachts, they're just big boats, but they're sitting up on blocks. I haven't noticed it because I've lived with those things my whole life. But if you send somebody to our high school and you tell them where to turn and they say, oh my gosh, Jim, what are those boats doing there? You don't even know they're there. Um, I mean, you know, because I've lived with it all my life. But that's one thing your town will help you with is, is, is that. And then ACE. And, and Sydney talked about ACE. Those are the list of the, those are the, communi the ACE communities. I wanted to talk about those four, I guess, organizations because in times past, there's been some contention with those organizations. Not the people, but is this one worth keeping? You know, one company's funding this one. Well, we, we can't fund Design Alabama because we're funding ACE. We can't fund ACE because we're funding Main Street. The thing I want you to know about ACE is 
And I've worked with each of these, each of these groups and I've worked in communities that, that each have these programs. They all serve a, serve a different purpose. ACE is the group that brings everybody together because if you're an ACE community, you have to have a local leadership program. If you don't have a local leadership program, they will help you set one up in your community. And local leadership programs are extremely, <coughs> extremely valuable. Extremely valuable. So there are, other, there are other great groups out there, the David Matthews Center for Civic Life. If you've never been involved with anything they do, I would encourage you. I mean, that is a, they are doing some wonderful work up there. The HERO program over in Hale County, the Walker County Area of Community Foundation. Okay, there are gazillions more of these out there. There's, there are probably these types of organizations in every one of your counties, in every one of your cities. These are just four that I have been involved with, and they, they do. And I left the Birmingham Education Foundation out up there at the top. The Birmingham Education Foundation, I mean, tremendous work in an urban school setting that has a lot of challenges. And they, 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 you know, he wakes up every day going to work to do something good for school children, most of them impoverished school children in, in the city of, uh, city of Birmingham. So there are a lot of good organizations out there that are trying to raise the bar. And, and you know, all of them, the, the thing that all of these organizations have in common <coughs> is civility. And you know, this is a great quote. Um, Claiming and caring for one's identity needs and beliefs without degrading someone else's in the process. Character. It, we don't even have to talk about this to, in today's world. You know, I'm a Twitter guy. I love Twitter. You can get on Twitter and people are just, it, it's just, you know, good grief. Civility is tough in today's world. It's tough in today's politics. We have a 16-year-old daughter, a 12-year-old son, and a 10-year-old son. Our 12-year-old son, James uh, III, I could have spit him out right there. He looks like me. <laughs> he sits next to me on Sunday mornings and watches Meet the Press. He can tell you, he can probably name, he can probably name more Supreme Court justices than most people in Alabama. Y'all all have a child. <laughs> That's our James. James can tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you this, he, he, he turns 12 next week. He got his first cell phone yesterday. I went to the cell phones. We went to the cell phone store. This is the deal that I, I don't know if you, you know, don't, don't, don't judge us on parenting, but at 12 at our house, you get a phone. So we walked out of the phone store. And, and yeah, and we walked out of the phone store. And James said, you know, you cussed four times in the phone store. I said, what? <laughs> And he said, he said, you said, beaver down four times. And I said, I said, uh, so he said, I said, damn, that's what he was saying. Because he didn't want to cuss. I said, well, damn's really not a cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> they are watching. They are watching. He can tell you when President Trump says crazy things and you don't think about it. We still eat dinner at our table every night when, when we're not at soccer practice or something. These young people. People, twelve-year-olds, and you each have these little kids in your lives. They're watching. They're 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 taking it in. They're taking it in. And we have we we we've, we've got to work on civility. We've got to work on. We can detest each other's opinions, but we're never going to move forward if we just sit there and just yell at each other. We've got to figure out a way, and it's got to start at the local government level because I promise you. Joseph Ogles with Mayor Monroeville can't act like that at home or nothing will get done. Nothing will get done. And uh, uh, Katanga's laughing because there's a community that she works with that that's happening right now, but with the locals. And nothing is getting done. Nothing is getting done. Nothing is getting done. And you know what? who's suffering? It's not the mayor or the city council. It's the citizens in that town. So we've got to have civility. And then, you know, this is just another good one, I thought, because it talks about don't be bull, don't bully, be thoughtful, not lazy, be humble, not timid, be proud, but not arrogant, have humor, but without folly. I mean, that's what we need. That's local, that's leadership. And if the people above us, the people who are elected won't give it to us, it's up to everybody in this room and the civic leaders to have that attitude and to show them that. So, what does, you know, what is that? Anybody got any idea what that is? <coughs> Yeah, those are car dealers that when I became mayor in 1999 were around. And they're now, in 2017, 
student. They don't even make any of those cars anymore. So in 1999 in Prattville, we had three local car dealerships. All three of the people that own those car dealerships lived in my town. Today we have one local car dealership that lives in our town. We had two local banks that the president of the bank and his father who was president of the bank before him and his father who was president of the bank before him lived in our town. Today, see, we have one. I'll give us one. Amy, I'll give us River Bank. I'll give us one. One local bank. Think about your town. Car dealerships, banks, retailers. We had folks on Main Street who were longtime retailers. Not there today. Not there today. Those are the folks who put their arms around me and said, Jim, this is what you have to do to be successful during your term as mayor. This is what we expected. Okay, so then you fast forward to today, if there's none there when a young guy or an old woman gets elected mayor, there's nobody there to put their arms around them and to say, this is what we need. This is what we've got to have. That's where the leadership program is, is just really, really important. So, you know, banks, car dealers, retailers, those are the, you know, those are the, those are the thought leaders. Pharmacies. You know, when I was growing up, when I became mayor, we had three pharmacists in town, locally owned. Three pharmacists locally owned. I don't know if we have a locally owned pharmacist. And I'm not knocking a store. Look, every town's got to have a CVS. Every town's got to have a, 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 a kind of a big bank. But, you know, look, there's three banks that were mainstays when I became mayor. Those are the people that gave to the high school when we needed something. Those are the folks that helped the city when we needed something. And they're, they're you know, they're, they're not around anymore. They're just not around anymore. So, there's a guy in Prattville named Larry Puckett. He, he sells Chevrolets. If you're ever down this way, you probably, maybe you bought a car from him. Larry Puckett and Jimmy Sanford, he's a cotton farmer. They came to see me when I became mayor, put their arms around me and said, Jim, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put you in, I was just finishing leadership at Tyler County, we're going to put you in leadership Alabama. Now, I know they can't really put you in leadership Alabama. I know there's a process, but that's what they told me. So at the same time, we had a guy named Clyde Chambliss who was chairman of our county commission. He's two or three years younger than I am. He likes to tell everybody he's a lot younger than me, but he's two or three years younger than I am. Clyde is now the state senator prop. He is now a state senator and represents us in the Alabama state senate. So Clyde's a few years younger than me. I'm the mayor. And this crowd of mentors decided, you know what else we're going to do? We're going to put Clyde in the same leadership Alabama class as you. And I go through a process again. Anyway, it magically worked out. Clyde and I got the same leadership class. And so they decided what we'll do is we will put Jim and Clyde in the leadership class, and then when they have to go to Huntsville, or they have to go to Mobile, or they have to go to Demopolis or somewhere, they'll ride together. You know what people do when they ride together? They talk, and they get to be friends, and they, get, they can trust people. They, 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 they begin a relationship. It's all about a relationship, and it's all about trust. And so they did that. And Clyde and I became friends. We knew each other, but our children were different ages. Our, uh, you know, we're just different ages, ran in different circles. I'm an Episcopalian. He's a Baptist. I know you find it hard to believe. Um, and for the record, if any of you are keeping count in practical, Tropical Storm Nate blew through our town on Sunday, as it did after everybody. All of our churches, like many of yours, are located on a corner in downtown Prattville. Baptist, cancel church. Methodist, cancel church. First Presbyterian, cancel church. Those Episcopalians, we were steady. We were there. <laughs> I had jokes with my friends from First Methodist. Told them we were on the corner, and, and one of the ladies shot back. She said, well, you know, y'all need more than us. That's really <laughs> So I don't know. I am not going to get into that. So this, this group of folks in, in Prattville put Clyde and I in the Leadership Alabama class together, made sure that we were nominated and, and did whatever they needed to do to get us in Leadership Alabama. We both attended Leadership Alabama class 13. We became friends. We, we worked together. It, it made our community better. Because if the council and the mayor can work together and if the county and the city can work together, as with anything, it, it just works better. Now somebody was talking about the, the naysayers. <coughs> Some of you have heard me say this before. Um, some of you live there and you will know it. There are five people in Prattville that woke up this morning that are just mad with God 
that he woke them up and that both of their feet are on the ground. <laughs> they blamed the mayor. They blamed me during the 12 years I was mayor. They blamed the current mayor. I'm sure, and I used to think those five people, the only ones were in practical until I went to a deck and I realized those people have met, have cousins and they're <laughs> all over the state. But what you've got to do is you've got to have, you've got to have the graduates of your town, you've got to have the folks who've been to leadership, whatever county, you've got to have folks who have been involved in Main Street and Ace that can then come down there and can back up the civic, the, the elected leadership whenever they say we're going to do this, that, or the other, and those five people show up to say, no, you're not because you're crazy or you're this or you're that. There needs to be some other folks in there and say, you know, that's not, that's not altogether wrong. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do that. There are a lot of communities in our state that are working real, real hard and are working together. Heflin was mentioned. Heflin is doing, if you've not been to little Cleveland County, Heflin, it is the neatest little town. It is, if they could bottle what they have, they have, they have leadership that believes in what they're doing. They have uh, an electorate that believes in what they're doing. They're interested in cultural things, and they're a tiny little place. I don't know how many people are 3, there. 3,000 people. Right, 3,000 people in Heflin. But they're a great little town, and they're doing good works. And you know what they believe? They believe they can do it. We can do it in Heflin, Alabama. They've, got, they've even got little bumper stickers. There's one at our house that says, I love Heflin. And they give them out and go there. So anyway, Leadership Alabama. So Clyde and I, I told Barbara earlier that um, I was going to tell this story. So Leadership Alabama is the reason we have a metro jail in Matauga County. Now, I don't know if you, some of you may be familiar with, with local government. Try to change something. You know, we had a jail at City Hall. They had a jail at the county courthouse. You could walk out the front door of City Hall, and about three blocks that way, you could see the, the county jail. They had jailers. We had jailers. We were feeding prisoners, they were feeding prisoners. You get the picture. So that's our <coughs> sheriff, this gentleman right here is our sheriff. That's Clyde Chambliss, that's me. Clyde and I sat down one day at a restaurant and on a napkin, honest to goodness, about the size of these napkins, we wrote out the plan for the Otago Metro Jail. They needed a new jail, we were ready to get out of the jail business. We then carried it to our lawyers, which happened to be the same firm and it got to be about this big. But we have a metro jail now because I credit it to Clyde, to the relationship between Clyde and ourselves. Not just that, there was a whole bunch of people who did a lot of work. But we sat down, we worked it out. If he said X, I believed X. If I said Y, he believed Y. And it's because we were friends and we had been thrown together in a car to drive to Mobile for, or to Huntsville for Leadership Alabama. And so I, I do truly, uh, Leadership Alabama is one of the reasons that we stepped over the hurdle. And anybody who's ever tr tried to change anything in local government knows that um, you're going to face hurdles, 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 hurdles. The, the hurdle that you won't get over is, the, is not trusting. If the, two, if the two principals don't trust each other, I, I don't know how you get over that, with the exception of a, a promotion, a resignation, an election, or a funeral. Because they're just not, you just, you just, you know, if you have two folks who are in leadership and they don't trust each other, it's very difficult. You can see it in Washington right now. You can see it sometimes in our state house. Some cities you can see it. But that, that trust, so I would encourage you, if you have, you know, you get those folks together. Get a relationship going. Now, do Clyde and, I, do Clyde and I agree on everything? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Still to this day, we don't agree on a lot, uh, uh, on everything. But we're very friendly to each other. He would help me. I would help him. And it's because of our relationship to leadership. Okay, so I want to put this quote up here. Uh, Governor Kasich, um, several weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so, uh, said this on Meet the Press. I put that on my Facebook page. I'm one of these guys that tries to keep everything very positive on social media. I'm not going to argue. Po you know, you're not going to change my mind on politics on, on Facebook. I'm not going to change your mind. Um, you know, put a picture of our daughter when she got her 16, when she got her car and all that stuff. But I'm not, so I put this up there and I just said something like, you know, this is a great quote. Everybody needs to try to raise the bar. Whatever you're doing, whatever your, whatever your role in life is, today try to raise the bar. Just try to raise the bar. Right? Don't do, you know, just try to raise the bar. Oh my gosh, you would have thought I had said, just put that up there, that, 
you know, oh, there's all these Trump people saying I hate John Kasich and all these Kasich people saying I hate John and Donald Trump. I said, look, look, guys, I wasn't, I wasn't saying it about Trump. I was just saying, you know, in Alabama, what would be cool is if we all just raised the bar. Just a tad. I mean, good Lord. Just, just yeah. Everybody just raise the bar. Just a tad. Imagine what our state would be like. Imagine what our state would be like if we raised the bar a tad. Just a tad. I mean, I think that's a great quote. So, um, I'm a believer in the value of relationships. If you get the right souls to the table, any problem can be solved. Any problem whatsoever can be solved if you get the right folks to the table. The question is getting the right folks to the table. I can tell you sitting right here, and I was in a meeting with her the other day in Lowndes County. Somebody was asking about, the gentleman was asking about what kind of shops, uh, and he's just stepped out of the room, but what kind of shops are, um, you know, in downtown areas, whatever. So she's having a meeting. This is how all things are local. She's having a meeting. She has no clue what I'm about to say, so she's probably thinking, oh, gosh. <laughs> she's got a meeting of about 20 folks. It's, it's her community meeting in Lowndes County. She's going over kind of a swap. What do we like about Lowndes County? What do we not like about Lowndes County? What's the problem in Lowndes County? What can we do to improve Lowndes County? All of these things that we've all been to a number of times. A problem that came out in Lowndes County that I didn't know about, and really because my ox has never been gored on it, there, were, there was a couple, an older lady and an older gentleman, married, I believe they were married. They go to the nursing home in Fort Deposit, and they bring people out to carry them to get their prescriptions or carry them shopping or whatever. And there's a bar in the door at the nursing home that comes right down here, right down to you know, a metal bar, and they can't get the can't get the uh, wheelchair past that bar. That's a first world problem, mm -hmm. and that was their issue. That they, they were so concerned about that issue, they brought it up at a community meeting. We go to the nursing home every week. We carry the older people in wheelchairs out to get their prescriptions filled, and we can't get out the front door. That was their problem. And so everybody's saying, well, how can we solve that problem? Cut the bar? I mean, I'm not an engineer. But that's where local leadership, you think about all these lofty problems. I mean, she's probably thinking, like I was sitting there, they're going to talk about we need more tax revenue, or we need this, or we need that. Their number one, because actually they had two concerns. High school football game price is too high because the old people can't afford them, and the bar at the nursing home. Not the bar. You know, the bar. <laughs> <laughs> they would get them a bar at the nursing home. <laughs> but, the, but the, the metal bar, the, the metal bar that goes in between, in between the doors at the nursing home, that, that was their, that's their real, truly real world problem. That's what they were interested in. And you know, if you think about it, those are things we probably don't think about. I, my guess is when she started that meeting, she didn't think, she didn't even know there was a bar there. You know. But she didn't think about that. That was the problem that needed solving at the moment for the people that were in that room. That was a problem for them. And that's raising, uh, no pun intended, that's raising the bar. You get that bar cut off, that's raising the bar for that couple right there. So I'm going to close with, that's my, um, email if you, if you ever, I don't know if you'd ever need me, but that's my email address and my Twitter. So um, some of you have heard this. I carry this little coin in my pocket, and I've got, you're going to have a takeaway today, a, 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 a literal takeaway, and it's a coin. So I carry this coin in my pocket. It's a B and a D coin. Some of you may have heard this. So the deal is that it's just a reminder. Um, the B is to be present in the moment. And look, we all have cell phones. I was sitting back there while Mary Helmer was, I'm going to go on and self, <laughs> self, I'm going to self confess because I served on her board of directors. I was, I was on my cell phone while she was speaking. We all have cell phones. We all have things that are, that are taking us away. But, you know, as I mentioned a time or two, we have three children at home. Some of you have children who have already left and you know just how quick it is because you're the ones who, you know, savor it because it, it leaves quickly. Be present in the moment. You know, you only have so many, we only have so many moments each day. We all have the equal, same equal amount of moments each day. And it would be a shame if we weren't present in that moment that God had orchestrated for our lives to intersect with somebody. And maybe we were going to be the person that helped them and uplifted them. Or maybe they were going to be the person that really uplifted us. And sometimes we don't even know we need uplifting. So be present in the moment. And then the D is just do one thing every day to raise the bar.
do one thing every day to raise the bar across our state. If we could do that, you know, we talk about kids leaving. Nobody wants to come home. Best compliment I had when I was mayor was a guy said, who graduated high school with me. He said, you know, Jim's Pratt was the kind of town that we all grew up wanting to leave. But when we had children, we were working our tail in to get back to because it's a great place to raise your family. Well, that's a pretty good compliment. So if we could all do one thing every day just to raise the bar, um, well, we'd have a great study. So I appreciate what each of you are doing in your home towns and home counties because it's folks like you who are raising, you know, it's these organizations that, that have presented this morning. They're raising the bar across our state with the help of local people. So I appreciate you guys allowing me to speak, and I do have a DMV coin for everybody, so you can help raise the bar every day. I don't know if I'm supposed to take questions. I don't know if there are any questions. Okay. Are there any questions? Everybody ready for a restroom break after lunch? Thank you guys for allowing me to be here. Thank you.